Hey. Hey everybody, I'm Rob. A common question I get about the stability ball is where do you sit for crunches? And the frustrating answer is whatever's best for you. So uh, I'm going to show you what's best for me and then show you some adjustments that you can make for your type of body. Now, first of all, when you sit on the stability ball, look, see, this, is, uh, this ball is actually not inflated enough and it's not uh, big enough because your hips should be directly in line with your knees or slightly above. So I should really be up about here. So um, this ball needs to be a bit, in, uh, a bit more inflated, but I don't have time for that. So I'm just going to leave it as it is. So uh, generally, when you sit on the stability ball, your lower back is supported. So you see you come down here, but your shoulder blades and your upper back are off of the ball. And that way your abs are contracted the entire time. So when you're doing crunches like this or with your hands behind your head, the abs stay contracted, your lower back feels supported. And in fact, the ball helps keep your lower back in a neutral position. It's not flattened out, but more neutral uh, the way your body should be. <laughs> what you want to avoid when you're doing crunches is releasing your rib cage. So like this, when you come down, inhale, release, abs are relaxed, and then squeeze to lift. Inhale, release, exhale up. Because as soon as you release the abs, you're usually releasing all the core muscles, uh, including the back. And then it's, you're really just using leverage and pushing your body into the ball in order to come up. And that's gonna be hard on your spine. It's gonna be hard on your lower back. It's not that the spine can't do that. Uh, and even like a few reps might be fine, but to do it for repetition, it's just gonna cause problems along the way. So, supported lower back. Arms can be wherever you want, with or without weights. Look at the small range of motion. Inhale, exhale. So not coming all the way down, not coming all the way up. If you came all the way up like this, again, so much pressure on your back, on your spine. So keep it small, the actual amount of flexion that the abs have is not a lot. As soon as you're done about here, maybe about 20, 30 degrees, then the hip flexors will get involved. Not that that's a bad thing, but when you want to try to isolate the abs, <clears throat> smaller range of motion is better. Now let's say you're somebody who has more weight in your hips. I'm going to try to uh, simulate that with uh, a weight at my hips. So I'm going to do what I did before, which was place my lower back on the ball, upper back is off, and then I'm going to do my crunches. <sighs> inhale, exhale, inhale, exhale. Now this is great, like it feels like a good exercise, but I'm not getting the same amount of flexion that I did without this extra weight. So what you may need to do if you're uh, hip heavy, you may need to walk yourself back a little bit because you're still going to be counterbalanced. So a lot of your weight is going to be forward and supported. <sighs> Inhale, exhale. <sighs> so more of your back <sighs> will end up <sighs> off of the ball. <sighs> Again, not releasing your rib cage in coming to that hyperextension. So if you're someone who has a lot of weight in your chest and you don't have the core strength to uh, stabilize yourself or to prevent that force on the spine, what you may need to do is actually come down a little bit further. So more of your back is supported and then do your crunches. <sighs> Inhale, exhale. And that's gonna feel much safer for your spine. And see, uh, the tips of my shoulder blades are actually coming in contact with the ball, which is okay as long as I don't hyperextend over and release my abs. Inhale, exhale. Again, small range of motion. All right. I hope that answers some questions, maybe clears it up a little bit about where exactly you should sit on the ball. Just make sure it's comfortable for you. Whenever you're doing crunches, you don't want to go for 
a hundred or hundreds that you might see online. It's a great ab isolation exercise to do, you know, maybe three sets of, of 10 to 20. An added weight is excellent as well. All right, if you've got any other questions, please let me know and I'll try to answer them in future videos. Bye everybody.